Jenny was so happy about the house they had found. For once in her life, it was on the right side of town. She unpacked her things with such great ease as she watched her new curtains blow in the breeze. How wonderful it was to have a room of her own. School would be starting, she'd have friends over soon. There'd be sleepovers and parties, she was so happy. It's just the way she wanted her life to be. On the first day of school, everything went great. She made new friends and even got a date. She thought, I want to be popular and I'm going to be because I just got a date with the star of the team. To be known in this school, you had to have clout and dating this guy would sure help her out. There was only one problem stopping her fate. Her parents had said she was too young to date. Well, I just won't tell them the entire truth. They won't know the difference, what's there to lose. Jenny asked her parents to stay with her friends that night. Her parents frowned but said alright. Excited, she got it ready for the big event. But as she rushed around, like she had no sense, she began to feel guilty about all the lies. But what's a pizza, a party and a moonlight ride? Well, the pizza was good and the party was great, but the moonlight ride would have to wait. For Jeff was drunk by this time, but he kissed her and said he'd be just fine. The room filled with smoke and Jeff took a puff. Jenny couldn't believe it he was smoking that stuff. Now Jeff was ready to ride the point, but not until he had another joint. They jumped in the car for the moonlight ride, not thinking that Jeff was too drunk to drive. They finally made it to the point at last, and Jeff started to make a pass. A pass isn't what Jenny wanted at all, and by pass I don't mean playing football. Perhaps my parents were right, maybe I am too young. Boy, how could I ever, ever be so dumb? With all of her might, she pushed him away. Please take me home, I don't want to stay. Jeff cranked up the engine and floored the gas. In a matter of seconds, they were going way too fast. As Jeff drove in a fit of wild anger, Jenny knew that her life was in danger. She begged and pleaded for him to slow down, but he just sped up as they neared the time. Just let me go home, I'll confess that I lied. I just went out for a midnight ride. Then all of a sudden, they saw a great flash. Oh God, please help us, we're going to crash. She doesn't remember the force, the impact, just that everything all of a sudden went black. She felt someone remove her from the twisted bubble and heard someone call an ambulance. These kids are in trouble. The voices she heard, a few words at best, but she knew two cars were involved in the mess. Then if the people in the other car were alive, she hoped in her heart they would survive. She woke in a hospital, so two faces so sad. You've been in a wreck and it looks pretty bad. These voices echoed inside her head as they gently told her that Jeff was dead. They said, Jenny, we've done all that we can do, but it looks as if we'll lose you too. But the people in the other car, Jenny cried. I'm sorry, Jenny, they also died. Jenny prayed, God forgive me for what I have done. I only wanted to have one night of fun. Tell that person's family that I made their lives dim and I wish I could return their families to them. Tell mum and dad I'm sorry I lied and it's my fault so many people have died. Oh nurse, won't you please tell that to them? The nurse just stood there, she never agreed. She took Jenny's hands with tears in her eyes and a few moments later Jenny died. A man asked the nurse, why didn't you do your best to bid that poor girl her one last request? She looked at the man with eyes oh so sad because the people in the other car were her mum and dad. This story is sad, unpleasant, but true, so young people take heed, it could have been you.